Forced to work from home by your employer? Laid off or feeling depressed at home? Do you want to make money working from anywhere? We'll show you how to do it from your couch. It's time for another episode of the Work From Home Show. Coming to you from their homes in Austin, Texas and Tampa, Florida. Here are your hosts, Adam and Naresh. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Work From Home Show. Shout out to all our homies, homeboys, homegirls, home trans, all the work from homers out there. I'm Naresh. This uh, with Adam Schrader. Today we have Josh Patrick on the show. He is a serial entrepreneur and advisor to private business owners. He took his first business from 1.5 people to 90 employees. He's the founder and CEO of the Sustainable Business, a consulting organization that focuses on what it takes to create an economically sustainable business. He is the author of Sustainable, a fable about creating a personally and economically sustainable business. And his latest book, The Sale Ready Company, What It Takes to Create a Business Someone Would Want to Own, Even If You Have No Intention of Selling. So without further ado, Josh Patrick, welcome to the Work From Home Show. Well, thanks so much. I'm happy to be here. Well, uh, the reason why I, I wanted to bring you on is because we haven't talked enough about the concept of selling businesses. So we, we've talked a lot about starting a business creating a cash flow friendly business, but not much about the people who have the intention of starting a business to sell it. So let's start with that. That's your, your latest book, the sale ready company. Let's talk about your tips to build a business from scratch with the intention of selling it. So so the first thing I would um, encourage your listeners to think about is transferring their company and not selling it. Um, The truth is, especially with work from home sort of businesses, you are not likely to find somebody from an outside to buy your business. But your business will likely be very transferable to either key people who work with you or family members. Uh, And in fact, the Sale Ready Company talks about transferring the business internally even though we do take a look at some out external options also in the book. But the truth is, there's two things you need to do to make your company attractive to somebody else. And this is true for whether you have a business with a thousand people or a business with three people. And those two things are uh, the next owner of your company is going to be concerned with the cash flow your company can produce. So if your company is not producing a predictable amount of cash flow, you're going to have a very, very hard time transferring your business. The second thing is you have to make yourself into a passive owner. That means that you're operationally irrelevant and you're not involved in the day-to-day operations of your company, but you are involved strategically. For some reason, buyers don't care about the strategic part, but they sure don't want the present owner to be actively involved in running the business because then you're stuck with the owner and most buyers don't want that. So what kind of businesses are good for um, building to sell versus building to transfer? How do you know which one you have? The easiest businesses to sell are blue collar businesses if they have a recurring uh, revenue model. For example, manufacturing companies will generally sell. At the same time, construction companies generally won't because they're as good as their last bid. Construction companies transfer. They just don't sell. Um, Whereas a manufacturing company has the option of selling and transferring. When I say transfer, I'm referring to children, family members, or key employees of the company. But service companies are really hard to sell. I mean, for example, one of our companies is a wealth management firm. And if you look at the industry of wealth management, you'll find that most of the deals for small firms are going for 35% of the sale price down and owner financing for 65%. Um, It might sound right, well, gee, I'm selling my company, except you're taking a big risk when you hold paper. So you have to make sure that you do the right things 
to make sure you get paid if you go around doing that. So let's say I own a small business. I'm, I'm trying to help. Uh, maybe we have listeners listening right now. Let's just say I have a, a consulting company. What resources or what tips would you have to somebody who has a small little you know, hundred thousand dollar annual revenue consulting company, and they're looking to to sell it. Is that something that holds any value at all for for, for somebody? Maybe hiring them full time as it, let's say it's a solopreneur consulting company, and then let's say there's a second business that's a consulting company with a few part time employees. Do those types of businesses, mom and pop, I wouldn't even call them mom and pop, but those small solopreneur or um, no full-time employee businesses have any shot of being sold? Um, not really. I mean, the, the, those businesses are referred to in the M&A world a lot as lifestyle businesses, which is kind of a pejorative term, but that's how they're referred to. Now, having a lifestyle business doesn't mean you can't run it and retire from it. It just means that it's not set up for other people to own. So at $100,000, there's no way in the world that business will have passive ownership. The owner of the company is going to be involved in everything because there's no option for them. You know, that's one of the problems with small companies is you're forced to do things you're not very good at. But the truth is a $100,000 consulting company is nice for a living, maybe. And I would submit that under $200,000 in revenue, you really don't have a business at all. It's really just something that could be a business someday. So where are people going to, like, where do you go to find buyers if you're interested? I mean, obviously, if you're looking just to transfer, you look at, you know, your upper levels or your kids or family members. But where do people go to find buyers if they think they have a company that could actually, you know, be sold? If they're smart, they're going to look for an intermediary who will sell their company for them. Just like, you know, there's real estate agents that sell buildings and some do homes and some do commercial or different types. The same thing ha- it exists in the mergers and acquisition world. At the bottom of the pile with businesses under a million dollars in, in enterprise value and likely under $3 million in enterprise value, you have the business broker. And that's the local person that sells to the local restaurant or... Uh, the local call center or the answering service um, or the local vending company that's really small um, or maybe a distribution company that's really small or a small manufacturer. Once you get over that three to four to five million dollars in, in enterprise value, then you start going into a hybrid, which is sort of a, a, an investment banker, but not a full investment banker. And they will use more sophisticated ways of selling your business. Uh, and once you go over $5 million in enterprise value, then you're really in the mergers and acquisition world where you get into the middle market where businesses that are doing $100 million would likely come in and pay you five, six million million for your business. So every level of selling a business has a particular group of intermediaries who are interested in helping you sell. Uh, the smaller your business is, the higher the percentages for the fee. If your business is under a million dollars, you're gonna likely pay 10% of the purchase price as a commission to the broker. If it's up around four or $5 million, you'll do what's called a reverse Lehman scale. You get 5% of the first million, 4% in the second million, 3% in the third million, and so on down to 1%. Um, Sometimes we do a, a, a forward Lehman, which is 1% of the first million, but 5% on the last million and everything above that, which I like because it encourages your broker to try to get a better price. And there's different techniques that you can use at different levels. If you have a business doing it's worth $200,000, you're not going to get what's called a structured auction where you go out to a couple of thousand potential buyers, whittle that down to 10, whittle that down to three and have the final three bid against each other. That's the best way to sell a business. But you need to have a business that's worth a couple of million dollars before you're going to find a broker that knows how to do that and is any good and will be willing to do it for your company. Does that make sense? Yeah. So how long, I mean, I've you hear stories about mergers that take multiple years to get done, which I'm assuming that's mostly the, the bigger companies. But how long 
is, should people actually be looking? Let's say you have a business that's um, kind of the, the couple million. Um, so, you know, you've built it up and it, it's something, it's there, it's worth something and you're ready to get out. Like, or should you start looking a year ahead of time, four years ahead of time? Kind of what's the timeline that it usually takes? There's two answers to that question. One is, your bus- is your business sale ready? If your business is sale ready, it's going to take you six months to a year to sell your business. And sale ready means that you've made your business economically, especially economically sustainable, but it's probably also personally sustainable because you've done the right things along the way for yourself as well as for the company. And, and there's actually two sides to a business. And we don't talk about this enough, but most advisors work only on the economic value of the business and not the personal value. And they're both equally as important if you're going to have a business for the long term and have a business you love well enough to get it ready to sell. So if your business is ready to sell, it's six months to a year. But the truth is most businesses are not ready to sell and they need to do some major things to fix it to get ready to sell. And that's a process that's three to seven to eight years, depending on what you need to do and what your goals are as far as the sale goes itself. Do you have any resources that you can share with with our listeners? And when I say resources, I'm talking about people who want to sell their businesses and also people who want to buy or companies who want to buy businesses. Is there like a website or an online marketplace where you can just go and see businesses that are available for sale? And is there an online marketplace where people can post all the the uh, prospectus, all the information, pro formas about their own businesses. Yeah, there's a site called, I, I know there's several sites, but the one I know is bizbysell.com. They post thousands and thousands of businesses for sale. You want to be careful about how much information you're putting up there. And when someone contacts, you want to have them sign a non-disclosure agreement so they you make sure that they're not taking your information and spreading it around the world. Uh, but Biz by Sell is a, a big site. There aren't many businesses that actually sell off the site. Um, I think the owners have told me that somewhere between 8 and 10% of the listings up there ever get sell, sold. You're really better off getting an intermediary who uh, can learn about your business and actually help you go find someone. I know it's expensive, but at the end of the day, a reasonably good intermediary will help you get more money than you could get yourself. Let me give you an example. I was talking to a potential client um, a couple of days ago. Business does $1.2 million, makes $600,000 a year. And the broker he was talking to said he could sell it for $1.4 million. And that's a ridiculously low price. The guy had made himself operationally irrelevant. He has recurring revenue. He's got all the stuff to make a business sell properly. And that should sell for somewhere between four and six times cash flow. So that's, you know, 2.4 to $3.5 million, which is a lot more than 1.4. Uh, my recommendation was to him was get rid of this guy and get a broker who knows how, knows how to do a structured auction because his business was the type that would be attractive for that. Uh, in his marketplace, there were 30 or 40 competitors who were doing the same thing he was doing. His margins are unbelievable for the industry. So a competitor should want to buy him for two reasons. He can just tuck the business into theirs. And two, they can find out what he's doing that's getting margins that are two or three times higher than the industry average. Looking the other way, you know, let's say some of our listeners have some money and during the pandemic they want to buy a business. What kind of things should you look for whenever you go in and you're talking with a broker and looking – and you start looking for a business to buy, what things should you be looking for to make sure that they're sale-ready companies? Well, um, I will, first of all, um, I'm not convinced you should ever buy a business unless you're starting from scratch. And the reason is 80% of business sales are non-accretive, which means the buyer doesn't get any value out of the um, business. But having said that, let's say you want to buy a business, the first thing you want to look at is there a cultural match? Meaning, are the values that you have in your company the same or similar to the values of the company you're trying to acquire? Now, that requires that you first understand what your values are before you can go out there and try to figure out what the other person's values are. And um, that's, a, that's the first step, we think, to creating an economically 
a personally sustainable business. You then want to take a look at how involved in the day-to-day is the owner. If the owner is very involved, you're going to have a really hard time um, moving that company to over what you're doing because the business is running on the acquiring owner's whims as a rule. But if the owner is out of the way and the, and the business has been systematized, meaning there are written documented systems in place with a management team that you could take over, uh, probably the acquisition would be a good one. It's something you might want to pursue. But it's really the soft side or what people call the soft stuff when it comes to a business that you need to be aware of to find out they're a good acquisition. You know, obviously they have to have positive cash flow. They have to be making money. Um, they have to have a customer base that is transferable. But those are all things that, you know, you can handle uh, relatively easily. But if you don't have the cultural match, you're probably going to have a disaster if you buy the business. So the first thing you look at is their culture compatible with my culture, and how do I know that's true? If you're starting a business today, how can you start it in a way that whenever you are ready to sell and set yourself up so that when you're ready to sell, you end up on that six month to a year scale and not the three month, not three years to eight years. How can how do you start from square one and make sure you're doing it right? Well, I would recommend that if you're starting a business from scratch, try to buy somebody's business. That's when making buying a business makes sense, even if you overpay for it a little bit, because you are getting cash flow right out of the box. So you can focus on doing the right things to get your business to be sale ready. If you're starting a business from scratch, you're going to be scratching to get the first dollar in the door, then the second dollar in the door. And as a result, you're likely to do a lot of things that you're going to have to go back and fix later on, meaning having the wrong type of customer in your company, having you be having customers be too dependent on you. But if you go out and you buy a business that's operating that does one or two million dollars in sales, you can probably buy that business for five, six hundred thousand dollars, which means if you can come up with fifty to a hundred thousand, you can buy it. Now you're off and running. Then you can say, okay, what are my values I want to install here? Um, how do I make myself become operationally irrelevant in the day-to-day business? How do I make sure we have a recurring revenue stream? How can I take the systems they have and make them better? And if you do those things for a few years, you will have a business that other people are going to want to buy. It's a way faster process than when you try to start a business from scratch. And starting a business from scratch is a lot riskier than buying something that's already going. Great. Well, that's Josh Patrick. Josh Patrick, thank you so much for joining us on the Work From Home show. We greatly appreciate your time. The websites, you have several of them. It's sustainablebusiness.co, sustainablebusiness.co. Also, stage two solution that's stage the number two solution.com and stage two planning stage and number two planning.com stage two planning.com his newest book is the sale ready company what it takes to create a business someone would want to own even if you have no intention of selling and he's also the author of sustainable a fable about creating a personally and economically sustainable business once again, check out his websites and his books are available on Amazon. Josh, any final thoughts you want to share with our listeners or anything else you want to promote? Well, the Sale Ready Company comes out July 20th of 2021. I would love it if people would go buy the book and leave a review on Amazon. If you love it, let me know. If you don't love it, I hope you don't say that. But if you do, you can say that too. But please review the book. It's really, really important. Josh Patrick, thank you so much once again for joining us on the Work From Home Show. To all our listeners, check us out at workfromhomeshow.com. Email us if you have any questions. Hello at workfromhomeshow.com. Check us out on social media. We're everywhere. Facebook, Twitter. Like us. Leave us a review on any podcasting plat or the podcasting platform that you use. And until next week, keep on working from home. (laughs) 